Hi everybody, welcome to Whole Wellness. There's a few things I wanted to talk to you about while I make my commute to work. Firstly, have you ever had one of those days, and I'm sure that most of you have, had one of those days where you wake up, you start your day, and nothing seems to be going right. You spill coffee down the front of you, you gotta change your outfit, your kids aren't moving as fast as that you would like them to, you stub your toe on the cabinet, you get rear-ended at a stoplight during your commute. It just, it seems like everything's going wrong. I had one of those days yesterday, but I have to share with you what I learned from it. So I live in a housing community and on Sunday night, we got notification that we were without water. All Sunday night, we were without water. So we didn't, we couldn't do dishes, we couldn't shower. Fortunately, we keep a stockpile of water. First thing Monday morning, I woke up, I was like, well, I have to go to work. What are my options here? Sorry about the bouncing camera. Um, I wound up deciding to go to work, but I had stewed about this major inconvenience. I could have easily called off work, but my boss lives in the same housing community that I live in. And if I had called into work, she wouldn't necessarily know whether I was sick or not, but she'd have a reasonable suspicion that if I was calling off work, that it was because of no water. And if I had done that, the heavy workload that I have would have fallen on my teammate and her, my boss. And that wouldn't have been fair. They've been good teammates to me. I really am a person of integrity too. And I had internally a problem with calling in just because I didn't have water. And my perspective at one moment was maybe I'll just call in late and say that as soon as I do get water, I will be into work. And then I thought, well, I don't know when the water's gonna come back on. It might not come back on at all today and then I will have called out anyway. And so I was really frustrated and inconvenienced in the beginning and I was stewing and huffing and puffing because we hadn't received any updates from the community manager that morning, Monday morning. And I was like, you know, it figures it's a Monday. And that's why I started this video asking how many people have had those kind of days because I was like, what else could possibly go wrong? Fortunately, and I say to people all the time, never speak that sentence out loud because the minute you say it, there's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing going wrong and it's a snowball. But I wound up being able to wash up with baby wipes and soap and water. And I put my hair up in a hat after a few moments of calm and rational thinking, I realized the problem was not that I didn't have water. The problem was that I was inconvenienced by not being able to take a shower. The problem was not that I didn't have water. The problem was that I didn't want to. I didn't want to, let me repeat that and enunciate. I didn't want to go to work without a shower because it was a little uncomfortable. It was, I didn't want people to see me unclean. Well, I, I was fairly clean. I mean, I washed up, you know. Um, but I have the same look almost every single day. The only thing that changes about me is my jewelry and my clothing. How superficial is that? And I was reminded in that moment yesterday morning where I was like, wow, I'm being superficial just the way I talk about in my channel about how other people are fake and superficial. In that moment, I was expressing to myself, hey man, you're caring way too much about what other people think of you. When it came down to it, I realized that it was really just my own pride and ego and superficiality that I didn't want other people seeing me without a shower and that it really was not that big of a deal and that I could go to work and not burden my coworkers and be the person of integrity that I so often talk about in my videos. So it was one of those experiences that I wanted to share with you because I'm not only calling myself out on my foolishness, 
but I also wanted to share with you what I learned not to be prideful, to be a person of integrity, to take responsibility for your circumstances and to not whine and moan and complain about simple little inconveniences when they're very easily resolved. I wound up deciding to skip my lunch break that day just in case the water came back on. And sure enough, at two o'clock in the afternoon, my husband texted me and said, the water's back. And I zipped home, took my lunch break, zipped it back home because I only live 10 minutes from work and got showered and zipped right back to work and finished off the day with the bang. This was the other part of it though. Having not showered, I was not about to go to the gym and work out, get all sweaty and nasty, and then not be able to shower afterwards. So I was ticked about that and inconvenienced by that. But once I showered, I, when I was leaving home after showering, I grabbed my gym bag. And after I left work yesterday, I went right to the gym, had a great workout, came home, had another shower, felt amazing, and then had a wonderful evening. So it's just interesting when you think back on some of the things that you get wound up about or frustrated about or inconvenienced by. The real focus should be on what the problem is, not how we're inconvenienced. I knew that the water would come back on eventually. It was just a matter of time. And I really did not need to freak out that, as bad as I was freaking out. Like it all worked out fine and I was super grateful. And there's so many other things for me to be grateful about. And that was one of those things that I felt that I had been selfish and whiny about. And so now looking back, I'm glad that I did go to work and that I wasn't um, prideful about the situation. Honestly, I've been dealing with so much recently that my emotions have been, uh, I, I feel like I'm being tested. I feel like I'm getting more than my share and getting an onslaught of emotional challenges. Um, and I'm, as you know, a woman of faith and it's okay if you're not, I'm not judging you or saying that you should be a person of faith. That's really up to you, not any of my business. But for me, um, I've been praying a lot. I've been trying to, you know, stay positive and stay strong and, and keep a rational head about myself. But, uh, tonight my husband, uh, takes my son my older son, who just finished his first year of college, to the airport, and he flies. Um, he has a connector flight into New York City, LaGuardia. He's going to spend tomorrow all day touring around New York City, and then he's going to depart JFK to Paris, and then he's going to travel around Europe before he finally settles in Germany, where he's doing his study abroad program next year. And I've been knowing that this is on the horizon. I've still been very excited for him and helping him plan and helping him prepare. And I still wasn't prepared for the reality that I'm not going to see him for a year. Like I'm not going to be able to hold him and hug him and that he's becoming an adult. I, if there's any empty nester parents out there that would like to chime in and give me some words of encouragement and support, I would love that. That being said, I'm doing okay. Sunday was a rough day for both my husband and I because we had gotten into a spat, a ridiculous spat that morning. But I think both of us are just high octane emotions right now with the separation of our oldest son um, getting into adulthood. But we resolved it fairly quickly. We apologized to each other. We talked about it. And, and we both were really in a funk all day. And we talked a couple different times about how hard it is and that it's the best thing for him. And he's going to be fine. And he's got a good head on his shoulders. And we regrouped. Sunday was definitely the hardest day. But then the water thing happened and all that. And so it's been a challenging couple of days, not to mention for me and my husband, but not to mention that... Um, I had lunch with an old college roommate of mine about four days ago. She was in the area where I live vacationing with her family, which was a complete fluke. And I haven't seen her since we left college. So it's been, what, 30 years or whatever since I've seen her. But we've remained in touch. So we went to lunch and we had a fantastic lunch. But she divulged to me that she wound up in a hospital 2,000 miles away from her home uh, for four months uh, because of her eating disorder. She got so unwell. And I just, I, I was heartbroken for her. She 
I asked her because her younger son, she has two boys and I have two boys and um, her younger son just graduated this year and he's heading off to college in a week or so. And I asked her, how is she doing with that? And how does she have a plan in place? And, and she said, she does not know how she's going to do. And that broke my heart. She said, she's taking it one day at a time. And she shrugged like she doesn't have a plan. Her husband planned a trip to Hawaii for the two of them for the fall. So hopefully that'll be good, a good distraction and something to look forward to. And then when they return, they'll have like Thanksgiving and Christmas to look forward to in the U.S. Those are like the big fall and um, winter holidays. And then by the winter, both of her sons are big baseball stars. They're both going to college on full ride scholarships for baseball. And um, so spring training will start and she'll have a distraction with that. And then they can start planning trips to their universities to see their, the boys games and stuff. So I was like trying, trying to tell her, you know, yeah, you can remain distracted and occupied with these things over the next year till you feel like you're making that adjustment. And I thought as I was hugging her and saying, I love you, we'll stay in touch and bye. I was like, I have got to stay in touch with her. I've got to reach out to her. But that was that was hard for me to hear because I don't have any experience with an eating disorder. Um, and if this is something that affects you in your life, um, my heart goes out to you because there's a lot that people don't understand about eating disorders. And I was talking to another close friend of mine about this and expressing how um, deeply hurt I felt for my friend for what the pain that she's going through and she had brought to my attention that for some people um, their eating disorder is um, manifests not because of a poor self body image but because they don't feel like they have any sense of control over their life so this is one of those things where my friend her life was identified as um, by being a mother by taking care of her boys. And so she was losing that identity when her boys were graduating and going to school. So um, this is a deeply, deeply um, traumatic thing for her that her boys are graduating. And then I, I have to cut this video off and get inside to work, but I wanted to wrap this up. But then Saturday, I was talking to another friend of mine and we got talking and I was telling her about how I, you know, once I got into counseling, life looked so much better to me. Coworkers are arriving now. Uh, so I'm waving, but, uh, she had asked me what had gotten me into counseling. Uh, and I was telling her the story and she said, yeah, a couple of months ago, she started having suicidal thoughts again. Um, and she hadn't had that experience in years and my jaw hit the floor. I had no clue, no clue whatsoever. And I, so, so my point being, there's a lot that's going on in people's lives and we have no clue. And I know it's very cliche to um, say, it's become cliche to say, you don't know what anyone else is going through, so be kind, you know, and, and that's true. I mean, I'm very careful about walking the line between not allowing people to treat you like crap, but being kind to people who are struggling um, and not biting their heads off when they do something wrong or screw something up, but just having patience and being understanding. And I got to the point where I was like, wow, there's a lot of people going through a lot of stuff right now. So that is my food for thought, my lessons learned in the last couple of days. And I'll be back with the series on gaslighting soon. I got to tell you about the, the revelations I've had with regards to my sister's long ass chewing text. Look for that coming soon. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in today to Whole Wellness with Anna. And I hope you've gleaned some useful information out of this video today. I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day. Bye guys.